Welcome back to the African Homestead, this is Eric. As we come into the dry season here in Liberia, I've been focusing a lot more on my chickens. They have been laying uh, eggs very consistently and uh, I've been enjoying them in the kitchen. But with that, I wanna make sure I'm giving them an improved diet. And so uh, let me just share with you some of the changes that I've been making recently. Since we have our garden established now, I haven't been using as much compost. And you can see I have some here that is in reserve that I'm using just for top dressing, side dressing, and compost tea. And so I don't plan on building any more compost piles. Uh, so I don't want this stuff that we have in here to go to waste. And so what I've decided is to incorporate more of this into my chicken's diet. So what brought me to this realization that I need to make a change in my chicken's diet to improve their diet was a movie that I recently watched. Uh, Justin Rhodes made it available for free for a few days on a weekend uh, uh, back in December, and it's called Permaculture Chickens. It's like two and a half hour long instructional documentary video on permaculture chickens, and it's fantastic. I encourage everyone to check it out. You can check it out at his website. Uh, but one of the things is just dealing with the diet of the chickens. Um, here in Liberia, we don't have access to commercial chicken feed. Nobody, nobody sells it, it's not available. And so uh, all the traditional approaches here is to use free range methods and whatever the chickens find, the chickens eat. And that's, and that's great, uh, but sometimes it can leave, lead to an imbalanced diet. And then especially in the dry season, um, finding bugs and worms is a lot more difficult. In my situation, you can see the wall behind me. Uh, that makes up two sides of the area where I keep my chickens and I have wire fence, uh, chain link fence on the other two sides. Uh, so they're very limited on what they can access. So we need to feed them. If I let them free range in my yard, I have about an acre here inside this wall. Uh, they'll also be pooping on my porches and digging up my gardens and causing a lot of destruction. So we can't do that yet. Once we get up country, obviously we're going to have a lot better options. But what can we do to improve the diet? You know, one of the things that, that Justin talked about was just since chickens are omnivores, uh, they have a lot of options to eat. I mean, even if I were to catch a mouse in my mouse trap, I could I could throw the mouse out here, maybe cut the gut open, throw it out here. The chickens will eat it. Um, kitchen scraps. Since we're not composting now, since we're going to be moving, I'm not building a new compost piles. I don't need the extra compost. So all those kitchen scraps can be given to the chickens. They're going to pick through, eat what they want to eat and uh, they're gonna get a lot more balanced, healthier diet than what they've been getting. In our situation, we keep our chickens, our rabbits, our goats, all in kind of a shared area. And so with that, the nice thing is, is the goats eat their food, uh, whatever scraps drop on the ground, the chickens are able to eat it. Um, but this is not an area, it's rocky, it's very poor quality soil, there's trees here. It's not an area that I'm going to use as a future garden. And so it doesn't really help for me to just throw the scraps on the ground. Because of that, my plan is I want to give the, the chickens uh, the kitchen scraps, but then later on, maybe once a week, collect those scraps and go ahead and throw them in the compost pile. If I do end up with some compost, I'll carry that up country with me, but I don't want uh, a huge amount to carry. And so my first attempt at this was to take this old steel drum, I cut the bottom off of it, and we just started throwing the scraps in there uh, from the compost bucket that we keep in our kitchen. Obviously, um, an egg carton is not supposed to be in there. So in looking in that barrel, you can see one of the problems I face. Uh, as, they, as we have that compost bucket in our kitchen, our scraps go in there, but also, you know, if we have uh, leftover coffee from in our French press, not only do the grounds go in there, but all of the water, all of the leftover coffee. Um, there's other times where it's just things get dumped in there that are liquid and so the chickens don't really want to scratch through this muck and so what, what I want to do is to open that up. So that brings me to the project I want to do today. I want to be able to give my chickens the kitchen scraps but I want to be able to present them in a way where they actually want to go in and eat where they're not just digging around in muck and mud uh, and nastiness. Uh, I want to be able to provide it but at the same time 
I don't want to leave it here on the ground where I'm not where it's not going to be useful. I want to collect it after some days, maybe a week, collect it up and put it over in the compost pile and let that finish. So we'll have a little bit of chicken droppings. We'll have, you know, some of that broken down and put it back in the compost pile. So what I want to build today is just a simple enclosure. Uh, actually, what gave me the idea was a whelping box that I built for our Labrador Rottweiler when she was uh, pregnant a few months ago, getting ready to have puppies. Just four feet by four feet. It's something that um, is open on the top. Chickens get, it, get in and out easy. The goats can get in, and if they want to eat a little bit, they can enjoy that too. Uh, but if they're not going to get spread all over the place like chickens like to do. And that way we'll be able to easily clean it up once a week, move it over to the compost pile, and let it finish uh, composting over there. So for today's project, I just found some old scrap lumber that we have laying out here. This is called Wawa wood. It's, uh, it's essentially, it's like cottonwood that you find in North America. Uh, it's a super lightweight, easy to rot. It's not a strong wood, but they use it here in construction. They use it um, for building forms, concrete forms. And that's what I use this for, is it's just left over from the whole project. Um, because of how I'm gonna use it, I really don't wanna invest any money in building a square box and so I have this old wood it's half rotten but it's gonna do the job so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna cut four pieces four feet long of course it helps if you adjust the fence before jumping into this have some nails in here and that's the thing with used lumber you have to watch out for. And then also the downside of using um, reclaimed lumber, this in this case used for cement forms, there is old kind of cement residue on here which is not good for the blade. But uh, just making a few short cuts shouldn't be too bad. four pieces we'll just nail this together okay before I start I want to share a secret with you did you know I spent almost 20 years in manufacturing before I moved to Liberia and the majority of that time I was in quality assurance and so I've changed quite a bit since moving here uh, one thing that actually isn't new but one thing that that I've settled on is when it comes to quality is uh, it's not making it perfect. It's never about making it perfect. It's about meeting the customer's needs. And in my case, um, my customer are my chickens. And they don't care if this thing is square. They don't care if this box is beautiful. Uh, they don't care if it's new wood or old wood. Um, all they care about is eating, uh, sleeping, pooping, laying eggs. You know, that's what they care about. And so when I look at my customer, I'm going to satisfy their needs with this box and uh, I'm cheap at the same time. I'm not spending any money on this and so I'm satisfying my needs as a manufacturer to make a product that meets the customer's needs, that meets, uh, that, that keeps them satisfied and at the same time uh, minimizing my inputs into that and so that's my, my goal today is doing that so that's my little secret. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is just put a couple braces on the corners to hold it together. Again, this thing is ugly, but it's going to do the job. This wood is so soft. Like I'm driving it into butter.
Another side note. For those of you who are worried about me wearing flip-flops and what will OSHA think of that? Well, first off, there's no OSHA here, so I don't have to worry about that. And, uh, and second, um, don't try this at home. That's my advice. Okay, so after all the hours of preparation and hard work with the highest quality materials available uh, and, and just an incredible amount of skill on my part, uh, here is the reveal. There it is. Not too heavy. That's my nice, quick and dirty chicken feeding trough, goat feeding trough. Yeah, that's it in all its glory. So if you want to copy this, uh, I can make some designs available with the material list and tool list uh, for only $29.95. Thanks for watching. Yeah, it's not too heavy, but it does get heavier the longer you hold it. It's a little bit awkward. And yes, my goats require two locks. And yes, if I leave that open, they will get out. <sighs> oh man, that's bad. So it's kind of funny, I went back to the kitchen to grab our compost bucket and see what's in there. It looks like I have some some uh, eggshells that we crushed up, some cucumber scraps, some tomato scraps, and looks like some plantain fry, uh, like plantain chip leftovers. And so it's just a little bit. We actually already dumped it today. And so this is just what's uh, been in there since then. But when I came back, it, look at this. Now when, I, when I've been watching this barrel, the chickens, maybe one will get in there but it's a little tight, there's not much room. But look at how they've come in there. They're already, they're already in, digging and scratching. And if you're looking at that and thinking, are those a bunch of avocado pits? Well, yes, they are. We, we grow a variety of different kinds of avocados in Liberia. Here in the city on the coast, um, there's just a once a year harvest. And that is, uh, I think around July, is when we is when they become ripe here we have a few avocado trees in the yard uh, but in the country they have a few more varieties and i guess the climate is is different enough that uh, their avocados produce uh, depending i guess depending on the variety produce year round and so we can get avocados 12 months out of the year here in liberia and sometimes they're almost as they're like bigger than my fist there can be some huge ones and they're just buttery smooth. In fact, in Liberia, they call them butter pears. But I digress. Back to this. And so, even the goats getting in on the action. So let's see if the chickens, a little bit of this. Oh, and there's, looks like some, uh, some toasted rice in there. I dropped one of the reasons I'm, I don't know if you noticed, you probably haven't, but I'm using my DSLR. I don't know if the photo quality, image quality is better with this. It may be, but my iPhone, uh, it's just a little eulogy here. My iPhone died. I took the kids and my family 
for getaway. Uh, we'd had a pretty stressful last few weeks. Uh, our Liberian daughter got married and our kids came from the U.S. Uh, during their, during their uh, break from college. And so I decided to take the whole family out to a little bit of a resort. And everybody was just itching to get in the water, as was I. And I left my iPhone in my pocket. So I spent five days in a bag of rice and it never survived, never revived. And so uh, I'm gonna be in the market for that. Unfortunately, you can't really find those kinds of things here in Liberia very easily. And if you do, you're gonna pay out the wazoo for it. So anyway, I'm using my DSLR. Right now my shoulder is burning because this thing's a whole lot heavier than an iPhone. And, uh, but the nice thing is, and I'll, maybe I'll do a review on this, I got, I got a mic. I got like one of these professional looking, uh, I don't know what they call them, torpedo mics or something like that. Anyway, I have a mic for my camera now, so at least uh, the audio quality is gonna be okay. But anyways, you can see, everybody's happy. The customer's satisfied, that was my goal. Chickens are eating, goats are eating, everybody's enjoying, it's just all happy here. So thanks for joining along today, and uh, feel free to click the subscribe button if you, uh, if you wanna keep following along on this journey, and if you don't, well, I can't make you. And also, feel free to comment. Tell me what you like about this, tell me what you don't like. If you don't like what I'm feeding the chickens, tell me about it. What do you suggest I feed my chickens? Um, I think that's about it. So subscribe, share, share it. Yeah, share it. That'd be great. Anyway, thanks a lot. Have a great week. Bye-bye.